Hello and welcome to your fifth Algebra 1 summer course. I'm Mr. Marquez, your summer online facilitator, math teacher, favorite math teacher, whatever you guys feel more comfortable calling with. That is cool with me. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, so today we're going to be talking about solving for a variable. Now, we've seen equations and we've seen various variations of those equations. We've seen equations by adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing, multi-step equations. Well, today we're going to see more practical application. How do I find a specific variable when I'm not just using X and Y? Now, we're going to see this a lot in other classes like in science, especially in physics. So it's something that some of you might have already seen, others might not have seen. Um, along with this video, when you see this video on College One, I am also going to include some exercises at the bottom, um, some practice problems, maybe one, two, or three at most, uh, in a PDF file, and you're going to download that as well, uh, because unfortunately this is not in your Summer Sharpener, which reminds me, every time we do something that's not going to be found in your Summer Sharpener, I will provide the work for you to practice. So with that in mind, guys, let's get started with this exercise. It says, in 2004, Ernest Van Dyke won the wheelchair race of the Boston Marathon with a time of about approximately about 1.3 hours. It says the race was about 28.2 miles long, or meters long. Um, what was his average speed? Use the formula D equals R times T and solve for R. Now, D equals R times T is um, a formula that is used to calculate speed or rate of change of speed. Um, and it's used a lot in physics and physical sciences. So what I did here is I broke down the formula, explaining what each one means. Because when we solve for a variable, there's always some information that the problem gives us. And there's always some information that the problem asks us to do. So if we can define what that is, we should be fine. So D is distance, R is rate, and T is time. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to plug in our numbers. D is 28.2, and that's what they give us. R is what we're looking for because it says solve for R. So we're just going to write a question mark there. And the time is approximately 1.3 hours. Okay? So what we're going to do is simply say, rewrite the formula, D equals R times T, but we're just going to plug in the numbers. So we're going to say 28.2 equals R, which is what I'm looking for, and my time, which is 1.3. Now if you look at it, I have a multiplication equation, right? Because R times 1.3 is going to equal 28.2. I just don't know what the value of R is. So what I'm going to do is actually divide everything by 1.3. is going to cancel out. Now I have to divide 28.2 by 1.3. And whenever you divide decimals, we turn them into whole numbers. So for example, if I want to turn 28.2 into a whole number, how many times do I have to move my decimal place? And that would be 1. So that would turn into 28 or 282. Same question with 1.3. How many times do I need to move that decimal? Well, once, and that would be 13. And now I can just divide, right? So 13 and 28, the closest number I can use is 2, because 2 times 13 is 26, and that would be 8 minus 6 is 2. I bring down the 2, that's 0. 13 fits into 22 once, so that would be 13, or 22 minus 13, which would be 9. So we just kind of turn it into a decimal, add a 0 here, and 90. And I think of a number that when I multiply by 13 equals 90, or something close to 90. And we can say more or less um, 13 times, we can say 6, 6, 7, more or less. Let's see if 7 will work. 21, 2, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9. So 7 doesn't work, so we'll use 6, and we'll say 0. 0.6, and 6 times 3 is 18, carry 1, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7, so that would be 90 minus 78, which would be 12. So we're going to say that our answer is approximately, R is approximately 
21.6, okay? So that was our answer. More or less 21.6, if you use a calculator, which you can, if there's a decimal, you'll probably get a more precise answer. I just rounded it off more or less. So again, what I did for this exercise was, I found the information that the problem was giving me, which was the distance, which is 28.2, the rate is what I'm looking for, and the time, which is 1.3. So all I did was I plugged in D equals R times T, where the D was, I plugged in 28.2. R is what I'm looking for, and where the time was, I plugged in 1.3. If I realize I have a multiplication problem, because it's saying 28.2 equals R times 1.3. So I divided by 1.3 on both sides, and it's approximately 21.6, okay? So let's go ahead and do another example. So sometimes in these exercises, guys, you don't necessarily need to find the value of the variable because sometimes they'll just give you variables and not give you any numbers. And sometimes that can be a little tricky, but in other parts it can be easier because you don't really have to find the value of that variable. And I know that sounds like a mouthful and it sounds like a tongue twister, but this is what I mean. Okay. So here, if I'm going to look at this example, and I'm going to step out of camera just to make sure that everything is working okay. So in this next example, it says, the, this is the scale that um, people use to convert temperature from Fahrenheit degrees to Celsius, okay? Because, um, uh, or, or this is, excuse me, this is the formula used to calculate temperature in Fahrenheit degrees. Now the formula says 9 over 5C plus 32. Now, sometimes they're just going to ask you to find, to solve for a variable, not necessarily solve it. Here, they want us to solve for C. So they want us to solve for C, okay? So if we're going to solve for C, what do I need to do? Well, I need to get rid of the 32. That's the first thing I need to do, okay? I need to get rid of the 32 so I can have 9 over 5C isolated. So what you're going to do is you're going to subtract 32, and this is going to cancel out, and you have F minus 32 equals 9 over 5C. So what do I do if I have, I want to um, find or isolate my C, but I have a fraction there, and it's kind of scary. What am I going to do? Well, whenever you have something like this, and you have to divide by a fraction, what you're going to do is you're going to flip it upside down. So 9 over 5 is actually going to turn into 5 over 9. And I'm actually going to do the same thing on this side. So all this is also going to be multiplied by 5 over 9. Okay? And this is going to cancel out. Everything here is going to cancel out. Everything is going to cancel out. And that's just going to leave me with and let me write this down here so I have some space. So let me just write this real quick. So that way, okay, I have space. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna cancel out and that's gonna leave me C alone, C isolated, which is what I want, and then just pass this on. So five over nine times F minus number two. And that's all I need to do. I'm not asked to find the value of C. I'm not asked to do anything else. I just want to know what the formula would look like. So again, my formula was 5 equals 9 over 5C plus 32. If I want to solve for C, I just subtract 32, which is what I did here, and this canceled out. And then that leaves me with F minus 32 equals 9 over 5C. I need to get rid of the 9 over 5. I can't have it there. So I flip it upside down and turn it into 5 over 9. And this all cancels out. And then I'm going to multiply, and then I 5 over 9, since I wrote it on this side, I have to write it on the other side. And that's it. I'm done with my problem. The only thing I did here was just um, kind of rearrange everything. So I, then my answer is just C equals 5 over 9 times F minus 32, and that's it. That's all you need to do. That's it. And you're going to see this a lot when you work with this in science classes, like physics and chemistry and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and we're going to do our next example. And our next example says M minus N equals 5. And they want us to solve for M. So I'm going to go ahead and do it here. M minus N equals 5. And I'm going to solve for M. Okay. Solve for M. 
Now, if I'm going to solve for m, what am I going to do? Well, this is really easy because all you're going to do is get rid of the n. And if there's a minus sign in front of my n, all I need to do is add it. So all you really need to do is just add n on both sides. And this is going to cancel out, and your equation is going to be m equals 5 plus n. See how easy it is? I'm pretty sure you're thinking to yourself, then why did you do such a difficult one in the first place? Well, because you usually want to get the harder stuff out of the way so that way you can enjoy the easier ones, okay? So that's it. Again, if it says solve for m, all I need to do is get rid of the n, and if there's a minus sign, I just add, and then I just add n on both sides, and my answer is n equals 5 plus n, and that's it. I don't need to do anything else. So let's do the last one of this video, and then we'll be done. I have the formula m divided by k equals x, and I want to solve for k. I want to solve for k. Now, solving for k is really easy. It's a little bit of a tongue twister because you and you'll see. Well, if I want to solve for k, and k is the denominator of this fraction, the first thing I want to do is multiply by k just so I can eliminate the fraction. So I'm just going to multiply by k here. And what I do, very important rule of algebra, what you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other side. So on this side, I also have to multiply by k. All right? So let me just rewrite this down here, okay? So we don't get confused. If I want to eliminate my k or solve for k, I have to eliminate it from the denominator. And I do that by multiplying k by on both sides. So now my problem is going to look like this. Okay? I just multiply by k on both sides. And I multiply by k here and I multiply by k here. Now, because remember, what I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So if I'm multiplying by k here, I have to multiply by k here. What's going to happen now is this, I'm just going to simply cancel out my k's. And m is alone. And I have m equals x multiplied. I can write it in a parenthesis if I want to, and that's okay. It just means multiplication. So don't worry about that. So I have m equals x times k. I'm not done with my problem because my problem says solve for k. So what do I do now? So I look at the problem and it's saying x multiplied by k is supposed to equal m, right? So if it's a multiplication problem, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is divided. Since I want to leave k alone, I'm actually going to divide by x. And what I do on one side, we say we do on the other. And what's going to happen is that this is going to cancel out, and k is going to equal m over x. And that's it. That's all I'm doing, just solving for variables, not looking for any answers necessarily, just learning how to rearrange this. You have to look at this as a puzzle. The good thing about this video is you can pause, you can rewind, you can go back to it as many times as you need. I'll be in the virtual classrooms Monday and Thursday as always. Um, along with this video, I'm going to upload one or two practice problems for you guys to do on College One. So stay safe, and this is your favorite math teacher saying goodbye. I'll see you guys soon.